uh, friends and colleagues from the industry. Wish you all a very good morning. Um, our, our interest in this uh, uh, conference is based on two uh, common aspects that we share with this association. We have a common interest in innovation and an interest in what uh, is being called green investing. Um, when you look at innovation in financial services and you, and you Google it, uh, you'd be surprised to find very, very little uh, information on any sort of objective academic research on innovation when it comes to financial services. There's a whole lot you'll get on innovation manufacturing. For example, uh, any manufacturing company's annual report when you open, the first thing you see is their spending on R&D, the number of patents that they filed that year. Any analyst is able to document that over a period of time and categorize companies on an, a scale of innovation based on patents and spend on R&D. But in financial services, we do the same thing, but we don't file patents, we don't disclose the amount of money we spend on, um, on efforts to innovate. Um, the, the Harvard University uh, funded uh, a study. Uh, this was a study that tried to come up with some sort of objective assessment of innovation between the years 1990 and 2002. So over 12 years, they looked at uh, every day's publication of the Wall Street Journal, because that was the only thing that they felt would give them some measure of what was going on in the industry, and uh, looked at coming up with some measure of the amount of innovation in financial services. And they came up with uh, a few things that uh, the study discusses, but two that I think are worth noting and two that I'd like to mention to you. One is they say that there is a high correlation between uh, the size of a company and its ability and desire to innovate. Smaller companies tend to innovate more. And what's good to know is that smaller companies that innovate more in the subsequent few years tend to become more profitable than their peers. So that's good news for those of us who want to innovate and to know that it pays off. Uh, but innovations had a checkered history. Not so long ago in 2008, a lot of discredit was heaped on those who tried to innovate, but uh, you can't blame uh, regulators for it. Uh, we have to take the blame as people in the industry when we don't understand that everything comes at a cost. Innovation that isn't properly regulated can cause a lot of pain to those who we, who we seek to serve. Someone like Warren Buffett has said, derivatives are akin to weapons of mass destruction. If you, if you remember the former Fed chairman, Paul Volcker, who's one of the most respected Fed chairmen in history, he's reported to have said, uh, the last uh, innovative product that he can remember from the financial services industry is an ATM. So that says a lot for what people think about our efforts to innovate. Um, but you know, when you look at our own experience in India, just look back at the last 10 years of innovations that we've seen in India. Uh, if you look at what's happened in affordable housing. There are speakers in, on panels today and it's going to be exciting to listen to them. Uh, IFMR Capital, which is on one of the panels today, has an exceptional track record in, in some of these areas that I'm going to mention to you. Affordable housing finance, uh, SME finance, uh, unsecured SME finance, financing to schools. Schools need capital, but schools don't get capital because they are not able to show profit balance sheets and uh, profit p &L because they're structured under law as trusts, so therefore they don't declare profits. You go to a bank with a, a p &L that doesn't show a profit, the bank says, I can't process a loan. So you have unique set of circumstances and there are players in our industry who've managed to innovate and find a way to understand these circumstances and make them bankable. So credit has poured into sectors that didn't have any access to credit. The mother of all innovations, microfinance. Right? Microfinance is almost 100,000 crores in size and uh, it all, all based on uh, a brilliant innovation by Dr. Yunus. Uh, his understanding of a woman's psychology, when you put her in a group formed by, from within a community in which she lives, her desire to live with dignity within her community leads to her taking whatever measures she must, whatever sacrifices she has to make to repay that loan on time. The only reason microfinance companies have 
in my opinion, I'm sure there are uh, people here in this, uh, from the industry. The reason they have 99% collection rates is because of the, that one understanding of her psychology, her desire to live with dignity in her society. And uh, that can, again, also lead to excess if it's not properly regulated and limits are not placed on the number of loans a lady is allowed to take. So innovation uh, in a responsible manner uh, has 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 uh, so much scope to improve or connect with the society we seek to serve. Um, so uh, we are all for innovation at Unify, um, but we need to do it responsibly. A word on uh, what I mentioned as I started out on green investing. Um, the any of you who've tracked uh, technology. Uh, any technology that has had an impact on humanity, uh, either a technology that seeks to improve the convenience in, uh, of, of human living or a technology that seeks to bring down the cost uh, without making any sacrifice on the quality has had exponential growth. But if you track the history, uh, there are experts who have charted this and it shows that it takes a long time for these technologies to move from zero to one. Take example of solar, for example. Think about this. In 1940, the first patent was filed to generate solar energy from a solar panel. The first megawatt-sized plant took 50 years after that, pat after that patent was filed. The first plant came up in the United States in 1989. In India, the first megawatt-sized plant came up in 2009. We had a two-megawatt plant that came up in 2009. In 2016, India will go live with 5,000 megawatts of solar. Next year, our run rate will be about 800 megawatts a month, peaking at over 3,000 megawatts a month by 2022. The, if, you, if you try and capture this, the way experts uh, explain it to us is it takes a long time to go from zero to one. On a scale of 100, it takes a long time to go from zero to one, and then, when it hits inflection, where the proposition meets economic viability, it goes from one to 90 in about the same time that it took to go from zero to one. Right, so it's up to figure out, up to us to figure out, are we at that point now? Right, so look around you, the evidence is all around. Right, so, so you have an opportunity to not just make a social impact, but a fantastic uh, financial opportunity for ourselves as investors to see how we can fit into the changes that are going to drive phenomenal growth and social changes around us. So we have a fantastic uh, uh, set of uh, panelists. Uh, I have to congratulate Aditya and his team for putting it all together. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, with that, I would like to wish you a great conference and thank you for your time and your patience. Thank you. <laughs>